and uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I mean, uh, it would be very interesting to, to uh, come back to all the discussion points um, that we have touched upon, especially also the, the last one, um, because human dignity and care, of course, are uh, threatened existentially also um, in this moment for humanity. And so I would like to start with a quote from um, Pope Francis, when it, if it moves on. Yeah, sorry. Takes some time, obviously. Would need to go back, actually. So, um, I had prepared a presentation. Of course, I won't have. Um, the time necessary for that. Um, yeah, it, it moves very slow, I believe. Okay, okay. So, so what I have prepared is uh, is what are threats to mental health um, related to the pandemic. The second, if we move on. The second one um, is on dignity and care during and after the pandemic and something that we can and need to do. Can you show that slide, please? So the content and the three points. Yeah, go on. And then the next one is the quote from Pope Francis. Human dignity is the same for all human beings. When I trample on the dignity of another, I'm trampling on my own. And just as a general introduction and point of departure for our reflection on dignity and care, what is the intrinsic value of being a human? What is the guiding principle for moral values and civic virtues that we are supposed to follow? On what do human rights, bioethics, and social justice discourses rest on? What do the constitutions of nations supposedly strive to preserve? The answer common to all the questions is the idea called human dignity. Every person is worthy of honor and respect, no matter who they are in this world. This is normative, but the reality is something different as we see day by day. If at all the inherent dignity of human beings was respected, resources such as health and education for realizing the fullest potential of the human beings would not be unequally distributed. Not only are material resources fairly distributed, unfairly distributed, even the honor of life is unequally assigned. It appears some lives matter less than others. The current pandemic has only foregrounded pre-existing social inequities and also brutally revealed the extent to which human dignity is compromised. In the name of curbing the pandemic and ensuring public health, what we see is that humans are stripped of their dignity. And this is true for especially for the most vulnerable, that is, children and other vulnerable human beings. It's high time we realize that respect and human dignity should be center stage in our response to the pandemic. In fact, human dignity lies at the heart of solving all social problems we face today. The COVID-19 pandemic is cruel. It has taken a toll on the lives of the people, especially the poor, the marginalized and the most vulnerable one. At this moment, it is good to recall an African ideal. I quote, I am because we are. As human beings, 
we fail morally when the dignity of our fellow humans is harmed and care is denied in any form. Solidarity and responsibility are key for preserving human dignity, which is the very foundation of our lives, societies, and religions. Can we move on? So I had prepared um, some points describing the pandemic-related mental health risks uh, for children and adolescents. I understand that there will be other presentations and we have already touched upon them. So I will just mention what is in this presentation um, step by step. So when we move forward, so community-related risks for mental health, the next one, challenges within the families. We have heard about that. Domestic violence and child maltreatment. Quarantine associated risks. And then the question, last one, are there any beneficial consequences for mental health uh, from the current crisis? Because, um, Professor Sachs, um, listening to you and uh, the different points you made, very valuable ones, one could say, OK, let's close the shop and go home. Um, what, is, what else can we do? Uh, I think there is, uh, in this very moment of history, there is not only the challenge of uh, a war and the pandemic and all the, the psychological burden that we have had to, to, to carry on uh, over the last two years and especially intensified over the last four or five days, which are weighing on our brains, which are weighing on our relational capacities, which are weighing down almost uh, our creativity and our, uh, our hope. Uh, but uh, if we lose that, uh, surely we can re retire to our homes and live a quiet life. Um, and this is not what I, I think is a responsible response to all these challenges, especially in view of the generation about which we, we talk here, the young generation. So th the, second uh, the second slide I wanted to prepare is um, dignity and care during the pandemic. So what was done, at least partly, and what has helped us also to cope with the complexity of the situation. Next. Um, build safe spaces where children can feel seen and heard, share their emotions, exchange their experiences and learn one from the other, how to replace time spent online or at television with other healthy, more healthy activities, family games, cooking, singing, dancing, physical exercise, prayers, meditation, mindfulness, grounding exercises, relaxation exercise. Give correct information about the, the COVID pandemic and its preventative measures. That would mean, if you move on, next one. So, um, next one helping them to interact with their colleagues and their families in a positive way with gratitude, appreciation, compassion, and kindness. Then next, next two, next two. Provide age-appropriate facts about what has happened, explaining what could happen in a reassuring way. The same would be true for now children facing the prospect of war, having never had uh, that situation in many of uh, the Western countries for many years, war close to their home. Give them clear ex examples on what they can do to help protect themselves and others from infection. Then, awareness campaigns, hotlines, and other services for children at risk of violence in their homes or cyberbullying and online sexual exploitation, which would lead then to offer safe e-learning environments 
at our Institute of Anthropology at the Gregorian, we have started 10 years ago training for safeguarding of safeguarding petitioners worldwide online, uh, which brought also about the necessity to realize that online education is very good, it is rather cheap, it, is, it reaches um, many audiences that you wouldn't uh, be able to connect to. Uh, it, uh, it goes to any place in the world where you have access to the internet, which is almost everywhere nowadays. However, there are also huge risks related to that, especially in terms of uh, possible sources um, of exploitation, not only sexual ones, uh, financial, uh, emotional, psychological, and spiritual. Finally, support parents and caregivers to understand their critical role in their children's online school involvement, to emotionally connect with their children, to manage their challenging behaviors, to keep them safe from online perpetrators and harmful content, and to nurture their children, but also their well-being on a psychological and spiritual side. Religions and belief are now seen, thanks to research over the last 30 years, as an important way to cope with trauma and distress. Nurturing children's spirituality, we can help them to find constructive meanings of the reality around them. And I'm pretty sure that the current situation has brought about uh, much of that interest and much of uh, that longing for making meaning of what we are going through. Cope with losses that have been suffered with the incertitude regarding their future and set proper priorities in life based uh, on their uh, ethical values. Now, I would like to finish with some points of what we need to do. I think a lot has been done to preserve dignity and care and to, um, to really help all those who are caregivers, parents uh, and others, uh, to engage in that. But certainly, we need to rely on civil society, we need to rely on the, on the sense uh, of um, commitment uh, of all. And if we see all those uh, demonstrations yesterday against the war, hundreds of thousands, millions of thousands of people uh, on the streets, um, uh, you realize that it is not all bad. And our focus on, uh, uh, on the negative, the dark side, uh, may be also our bias and our leaning into what, what we are offered by the social media. Because as we know, bad news are good news for, for media. And, uh, and, and we are, by our, our um, what do you call it, accessing history, we are also drawn into the algorithms that bring us more of that content that we look at. So um, what can we do and what we, what we need to do? And this is the last slide. Can we go to that, please? Next, yeah, first point. Raise awareness about increasing levels of violence against children. Uh, through raising awareness through online messages, radio messages, and religious services about the negative impact of the disruptions caused by home or indoor confinement can have on families. So learn about the impact of COVID on children by reading some of the resources from uh, religious leaders and child protection experts. Provide information to all members of your community, parents and caregivers, uh, about how to contact child helpline and domestic violence hotline. Contact all families in your communities by phone, to get insight in their situations, provide counseling and listen to the most vulnerable members of the family. Encourage members of religious communities to reach out to each other and to inform religious leaders when they suspect children or women are experiencing violence at home. Second, support children's awareness of COVID and coping with physical distance. We have had already many points on this this morning, so just what could be done to preserve uh, care, uh, to, to offer care and to preserve the dignity. Help families to find virtual ways to encourage children and young people to be connected with one another in 
a sensible and a reasonable way. Organize activities for children online or talk to them through, through home, phone calls. Read uh, stories together. Um, discuss information about the coronavirus. Share how important it is to keep physical distance from others in order to, to help prevent the spread of the disease, but at the same time raise awareness about the possibility to, to get together in a, a, um, a reasonable uh, and in a um, respectful way. Next, help create healthy, nurturing, and safe environments for children during the confinement, including online safety. Encourage parents and caregivers to support their children by listening with patience, empathy, and compassion. And give the, the parents also some indications about where they can find for themselves the resources for their proper self-care. Use religious activities to teach children healthy routines, and particularly to prioritize all what is meant to prevent uh, further spread of the COVID virus. Support parents and caregivers in providing learning opportunities for their children by organizing specific activities online, via phone, and whatever. Encourage parents and caregivers to balance online activities with other non-digital kinds of learning. For example, by creating opportunities in the family to share and to discuss information together. And in functional families, of course, the reasonably functional families, that has happened over the last uh, two years. Finally, support parents to nurture ethical values and spirituality in children within the family and in places of shelter. Promote solidarity with one another and encourage families to reach out uh, to others who might be lonely or in need or help by getting food for them. Help parents and caregivers to nurture gratitude in children and to promote ways for children to care for themselves, for others, and for Mother Earth, and connect with God, the divine, or the transcendent, whatever you may call it, by creating regular spaces for reflection meditation, and prayer. So let me finish um, by um, summarizing what I want to say. Dignity and care. Yes. We not have time to discussion, so sure. Dignity and care in the age uh, of the virus. The picture is very challenging. While we need to be sober and realistic, we can't let ourselves be weighed down by the conditions, lest we get too depressed and can't support and accompany the new generations on their journey into the future. This is our responsibility. Period. Thank you very much.